In this mini tutorial, I will be introducing the concept of online collections. First up, some terminology. You'll hear online collections referred to variously as digital collections, online collections, or electronic collections. Are they actually all the same? When we use words like electronic and digital, we may in fact be referring to collections that include equipment needed to access digital files or resources, as well as collections that are available primarily online. In this mini lecture, we'll be focusing primarily on online materials. These are materials that exist on the World Wide Web or can otherwise be found on digital networks. Aside from naming the collection, a second consideration for online collections is whether or not we're including within our scope collection items that might be freely available on the web in addition to or instead of collection items that might be purchased. Increasingly, we're seeing online collection management as incorporating far more curation with freely available web resources being identified, evaluated and selected, then catalogued or linked within the library's catalogue. Online collection management is therefore a little different from physical collection management because of access to a wide range of resources that the library doesn't necessarily need to purchase. The librarian's role then is to curate a collection that is relevant for our user groups which meets the collection development policy of the library. Let's look at various types of online collections. These collections are informed and formed by the style of library and the type of users that are accessing this library collection. In an academic library context, resources in the online collections tend to be focused on supporting learning and research. This might include full text aggregated databases, as well as indexing and abstracting databases which don't contain full text, ePrints, which is usually the institutional repository, freely available online resources, for example, a link to the Australian Bureau of Statistics site, and ebooks in both a mixture of online accessible ebooks and downloadable ebooks. In the public library, the context um, of the collection is a little bit different. Public libraries tend to focus on supporting the leisure and lifelong learning needs of their users. For this reason, the public library online collection tends to include full text aggregated databases. Consumer information is the focus for the full text aggregated databases that public libraries are subscribed to. It is unlikely that a user will be satisfied with an abstracting or indexing database because they may not then have the capacity to connect these abstracts to the full text. Public libraries will also purchase access to online general reference materials, for example, encyclopedias and dictionaries, as well as subscriptions to learning products such as computer training tutorials to allow their customers to upskill themselves. Public libraries will also link to a range of freely available online resources. These include the types of resources that academic libraries might link to, for example, the Australian Bureau of Statistics or legislation databases, but they also include things that will support customers in their leisure reading as well, like, for example, links to things like Project Gutenberg. Public libraries offer ebook and audiobook platforms with a focus on leisure reading and reference. Leisure reading titles are often best used in a downloadable format where the customer can put the book on their own device and read it wherever they are. Reference materials, on the other hand, like Oxford University Press titles, tend to be used on a dip in and dip out basis. So these tend to be bought in an online access format. Also increasing is provision to online magazines and comic book formats. The school library is challenged to offer both academic and leisure resources, and so they use a combination of platforms and services to meet both types of needs. School libraries may provide access to databases for research, but also include in their collections ebooks and audiobooks through platforms such as Overdrive or Wheelers. Other resources that school libraries might include in an electronic collection include streaming video, music, curated collections, subject portals, and access to freely available but potentially unknown resource collections through institutions and organisations including Trove, Getty Images, 
Project Gutenberg, Khan Academy, the Metropolitan Museum of Art or the Australian National Library. Increasingly, collection curation is becoming a part of collection development. However, it is different from traditional co uh, collection development because the resources are otherwise freely available and yet selected and assembled with a focus on a particular group of users. The group of resources are formatted into a single web-based artifact which can be catalogued and therefore identified by the users of the library. A curated collection is specifically created to meet an identified purpose or need which physical or digital resources are not currently meeting. The collection has generally has a meaning for a specific audience. For example, a curated collection of websites on the topic of mammals might be created for research use for a group of year two students and another similar curated collection be initiated for year seven students. These two curated collections may have the same topic. However, the type of websites that are included would be different in acknowledgement of the particular needs of the year two learners versus the needs of the year seven learners. Often a curated collection will draw together freely accessible online resources and present them in a way that makes them more accessible and meaningful for the users. This is how collection curation or digital content curation is different to simply making lists of websites. It's the act of editorializing and selecting the particular resources to include in the collection that differentiates itself. Often what is left out of a, collected, a curated collection is more important than what is included. Why would you consider curation in a digital or online library context? Clay Shirky suggests that curation comes up when search stops working. Using curated lists can help the teacher librarian or the librarian create a library catalogue that has no dead ends. This means that when the user searches for a topic, even if the library collection does not include hard copy or digital resources to meet their needs, they are more likely to encounter a resource that has been created using already existing content but that has been collected specifically to meet that particular search need. So let's look at the processes of collection management for online collections. The selection of online resources is similar and yet different to traditional resource selection. When considering which resources to select for inclusion in an online collection, some items remain the same. For example, the content of the item should be considered. The subject coverage, the target audience, the reliability, the objectiveness and the authoritative nature of the content is all important to consider. However, while these form the key aspects of criteria for selecting a hard copy text, an online resource also includes functionality and usability. Is the interface that is presenting the online resource intuitive for users? Does it meet usability standards for all users with all types of needs? Is it highly accessible and does it have searchability to enable the user to navigate and effectively locate the part of the resource that they are needing? More things to, to consider include the system of delivery, including its stability and responsiveness, as well as whether or not it has web browser or device compatibility across multiple different devices and browsers. This recognises that users will come with different needs and with different tools and, and the ability to be able to access the resource across multiple different avenues is very important. Access is another feature to consider of online resources. Does the library need to license the content in order to provide access? Is there a purchasing model and what does this purchasing model look like? Does the content, uh, is the content available for free or is it offered on a freemium um, process? And if it is freemium, what are the limitations on the free version and what are the expenses related to the freemium version or the version that you need to pay for after the base model, the base free model has been exploited. 
The statistics and reporting capabilities of, are also something to consider if we're looking at a platform that provides access to digital resources. Are there alerts that are easily identified when things go wrong or when the library staff need to be informed of a particular aspect of the device or platform? Does the platform provide analytics so that you can use that in reporting in order to justify any purchasing or any usage stats? The acquisition of online resources can be quite different as well. Online resources are often not acquired as much as accessed. You can't, oftentimes it's not a matter of purchasing an online resource as much as it is purchasing the access to the resource. Therefore, we need to consider the costs involved and if they're a one-off cost in the purchase, in the initial purchase, or whether the costs um, are recurring in terms of a hiring or a licensing agreement. Does the acquisition involve something that limits access? In other words, is the free version highly accessible and does the freemium version offer more or better access for users? Is filtering required so that uh, um, users of different age groups and maturities can access the resource. There is also a need to examine copyright and licensing conditions, the possibilities of remote access, because not all users will be able to physically attend the library at all times or when they need their access to the resource, and whether or not the resource allows for concurrent users or whether it is limited to one user at a time, which is similar to the traditional book where only one person can hold the book at one time. The organisation and presentation of online resources requires different approaches to physical resources. We need to consider if there are differences between teacher access and student access, and whether it's possible or necessary to limit access to different age groups. It's also important to examine the ease of use, including whether or not uh, users require a device to access the material, whether there is remote access, whether material is available online or offline. This is particularly important if you're working in an environment where many users do not have online access once they've left the school or library grounds. We also need to consider the students needs. Are there visual supports? Audible, uh, audible aspects so that students can listen rather than read? Is the resource highly text-based? A highly text-based resource will not be useful for early years students who have yet to learn how to read, whereas a visual resource might be more suited to these students and assisting them to navigate to where they want to go. It also depends upon the content. A highly text-based resource that describes art or visual for media is probably less useful than a visual resource for, these content, for this content. Another thing to consider is the use of passwords or the requirement for students or users to log in. While this is often considered standard for adult users, it's often challenging to manage and organise passwords and logins for students, particularly if they can't uh, reissue themselves with a password if they get themselves locked out or reissue themselves with a login if they forget their username or password. The discoverability of online resources is a key challenge. Online resources aren't physically visible and therefore it is easy for them to become forgotten, out of sight, out of mind. There are several ways that you can redress this issue. Including links in the catalogue creates a catalogue with no dead ends. It's important that ebooks and audiobooks, when not visible physically, are able to be searched for easily within the catalogue so that users can find the item that they're looking for even if they physically can't see it. Using posters, bookmarks and signs or other physical promotion of digital resources is a creative and important way to promote the discoverability of online resources. Consider using social media as well to promote resources where your users are at so that if they are already in a particular digital or online space, they then may encounter your resources serendipitously. To learn more about social media and the school library, consider watching the slide share on the link on this slide.